Hey friends and wine lovers, how are you? It's been a while since I've made a video, so first of all, welcome back. It's great to be here. I'm Mark Supsick, I'm a certified wine and spirits professional, and I'm the creator of Wine Living. I started this series called The Best Wines for Beginners to help people who were just starting out drinking wine to get in at the ground level and learn about some really fantastic wines. If you need just enough information to dive in, that's what you're going to get here. I'll give you some history on the wine, I'll give you some tips on how to drink it and enjoy it, and also some food pairing suggestions too. So far, this series of videos has been viewed over 100,000 times, so thank you. Now, for those of you who like big, bold red wines, you're going to want to stay tuned because today we're going to talk about Malbec. Fans of big, heavy red wines are in for a real treat when they try Malbec. One of the most surprising things about Malbec is that it's not from Argentina. Most people think it is, but it's actually genetically traced to France. In Bordeaux, it was used for centuries to blend in with other grapes in very high-end wines. That's one of the reasons why so few people know about Malbec, because it was sort of hidden in these blended wines for so long. So for centuries, Malbec thrived in the lower southwest corner of France predominantly in an area known as the Lot Valley, named after the Lot River. By the medieval times, some of the best quality Malbec coming out of France was coming from a small town by the name of Cahors. To this day, you can still identify some of the best French Malbecs by just looking on the label for the region of Cahors. By the way, in this part of France, they actually don't even call the grape or the wine Malbec. They have two major names that they go by. There's Cot, C-O-T, and there's Auxerrois, but from what I understand, there are over a thousand different regional names for this grape and this wine, depending on what part of the Southwest you're in. So how then did French Malbec get lost to history and then reborn as an Argentine wine? Like a lot of agricultural products from Europe, it was brought to Argentina on a whim in the 1800s, and it stayed there uncelebrated for about a century. In the 1950s, something unexpected happened. A major frost in France almost wiped out the entire crop of Cot in Cahors and the surrounding regions. It was pretty devastating to the winemakers of Cahors, and it would take the region decades to recover. But in the meantime, Argentina gained momentum and eventually became the top producer of Malbec wines. Malbec is now the most planted wine grape in all of Argentina. Although I love Malbec from Argentina, I really, really encourage you to look for some Malbec from Cahors. This here is the original Malbec, and I think it tastes a lot different. So generally speaking, here are what I think are some of the big differences between Malbec from Cahors and Malbec from Argentina. Malbec from France and Cahors tends to be a little bit more lean. Some people describe it as even muscular, if that makes any sense. But if you like tart and complex flavors, things like dried cranberries, dark chocolate, and even coffee bean, then this is something that you've got to try. Personally, I think French Malbec is at its best with at least five years of age or more. When it starts out young, it's a little bit lean and mean and taut, and it needs some time to relax a little bit. On the other hand, if you like big red wines that kind of come at you with the fruit flavors, things like blackberry, strawberries, and vanilla, then Malbec from Argentina is going to be more of your style. As far as food pairing is concerned, if you want to go full-on French, Caor Malbec is born to be paired with duck. We visited this region of France years ago, and duck was being served practically everywhere, especially duck liver pâté and foie gras. I guess it makes sense that the wine is also an amazing partner for roasted poultry, too. Malbec from Argentina, I think, is more geared for grilled meats like beef and lamb. Also, big hearty stews. As is often the case with grapes, Malbec has roamed around the world now at this point, and you can get great examples of Malbec from California and even the east coast of the United States where I live. And as far as price is concerned, you can pay as little as $10 for a very drinkable bottle of Malbec. Many of the French Malbecs are more moderately priced. And on the high end, some luxury Malbecs command anywhere from $50 to upwards of $100. Now this particular brand here is one of my favorites. This is Claude Trigadina from Cahors. When we visited the region of France, we uh, fell in love with their wines. I'm going to break out a separate video and we're going to do a tasting of these wines, so be sure to stay tuned for that. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you learned something about Malbec. If you like what I'm doing here, please do me a favor. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, and that way you'll get notifications whenever I roll out something new. Enjoy your Malbec, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.